God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm Pastor Lynn Bracco. You're back with Retro, getting it all back. It's such an honor and a privilege to bring you each week the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's what this church is all about. We reach out. It's an outreach center. We touch as many people as we can, and we have the privilege of coming into your home. How are you doing today? Are you in some kind of a, 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 a dip, as you're going to hear later on? You know, it's sometimes we're in the dip, and then we come out of it, and then there's another dip. It's like when you get an electrocardiogram, and you see the dips on the electrocardiogram. Well, where are you today? If you need to be lifted up out of that dip, that circumstance, that situation, the message today is going to minister to you. The Holy Spirit's going to take you by the hand and lift you up out of your dip, whatever it is, depression, maybe not enough money, maybe your body is down. Today is your healing day. Yes, you just get ready for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit to come into your house, into that screen. God is so good. Before Pastor John Corden brings us a great message about the dip, we're going to have Shabbat. Oh, they're just going to lift your spirit as they minister under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. See you in a few minutes. Today, today, and forever. The same as the day, today, and forever. And I 
the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, there are forces fighting against you. There are strongholds being built around your breakthrough. And you're not smart enough, Lynn Bracco. There's no human force that could break the stronghold. And he said, I want you to bring my church together for seven days. Seven. A supernatural number. And in coming together for seven days with fasting and adoration and faith, we're going to break the stronghold that's holding back the refinancing of this building. Do you understand? I've been in this a long time. But I know the power and the force of heaven that's needed to pull down this stronghold. And the Holy Spirit said, and you tell those that are believing with you and fasting with you, that as a harvest of their investment in these seven days, the strongholds of their families will come down. I wrote it down because it was dark. Put the light on. I said, I don't want to forget this, Lord. And we are believing that something is going to happen in the invisible this week. Breakthrough is going to come to pass on 3,500 Fowler Street. The Word of God tells us every place that you put your foot, I'm going to be with you. We've put our feet on 35. We're in a paper factory on Metro Parkway. We put our feet there. It was blessed. We were in a cafetorium over there on Cypress Lake. We put our feet there, and it was blessed. We put our feet here, and we're blessed. And we're going to prevail. How many believe we're going to prevail? I'm looking for some soldiers. I already spoke to our leadership we're standing soldier to soldier, shoulder to shoulder, believing that this is our week for breakthrough. How many have that faith with me? How many are willing to give up a piece of bread or turn over your dish or give up your coffee or turn away that bagel or something that means something to you? Because if it doesn't mean nothing to you, it's not going to mean anything to God. You give up breakfast and you never have breakfast, that's silly. You hear me? But I need your faith. I need you to say, Pastor, seven days, the breakthrough is coming. Seven days, the refinance is going to come through. Seven days, a glow, the fire falling every night. Seven to eight o'clock. How many say, Pastor, I'm going to do the best I can to get here every night? Three people. How many are going to do their best to get here with the seven days? Okay. Seven to eight at night. Seven to eight at night. Seven to eight at night. You need a breakthrough? You've got to pay its toll to get over the Cape Coral Bridge. What are you willing to pay, invest for your breakthrough? Some of you are waiting for a breakthrough on your job. You're waiting for a promotion. You're waiting for education. Whatever it is. This is our week, seven days aglow on Fowler Street, seven to eight at night, communion, a word from every pastor and elder. The Holy Spirit said to me, I'm going to use this to bring the greatest revival your church has ever experienced. How many are ready for that kind of revival? I'm going to use this, he said. This crisis is going to bring a revival on Fowler Street. Your friends, your family are going to get saved. They're going to be tongue-talking, pew-jumping people right here in this place. How many believing with me? Are you ready for this seven-day journey? How many say, Pastor, I'm ready for a seven-day journey. I'm going to fast. If I can't get here every night, I'm going to do my best to get here. But I am going to be agreeing with the vision of this house. That refinance is coming through in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Well, starting tomorrow night, day number one, it's going to happen. Amen.
Amen. Pastor John, extraordinaire, extraordinary man, coming up to feed us the Word of God. Build our faith this morning. Amen. God bless you. Well, it's good to be here this morning. This week I was thinking about a book that I read a few years ago, and the name of the book is The Dip. It's got by, by a guy named Seth Rodin, and it's a business book. The, pr- the premise of that book is this, that every great business that has ever been and ever started and every great leader that has ever been has gone through what the author called was a dip. In other words, when the business is starting and people are organizing and they, maybe they've got a new product and everybody's excited about it, and there's momentum, and it seems to take off, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes to a certain point, and then there's an obstacle, and then that obstacle causes a dip. And then in the dip, people have to do something to get out of the dip. And with every dip, there is a different solution to getting out of that dip back up to the next level. So the premise of the book is there's excitement, there's acceleration, there's a dip. Then there's adjustment, excitement, acceleration, and then a dip. And there's adjustment, excitement, acceleration, and then a dip. And something good, different, innovative, has to happen in that dip to go up to the next level. How many of you can identify with that? And so from exception, getting an idea to seeing that idea materialize, really the necessary thing for it to be whatever that concept is, all that it was meant to be, you need dips. And the greater the dip... Actually, the better the concept or the product or whatever it is will be. Because more needs to be massaged and adjusted and made better. Does that make sense to you? So as I was reading that book, I thought, you know what? I wonder if this guy read the Bible. Because the Bible is full of people and circumstances and situations that have experienced dips. Dips over and over again. And then as people get past that dip and God grabs them out of that dip when they're ready to come out, you know, they go up to the next level. And then all of a sudden there's another dip. Case in point would be Moses. If you look at his life over and over again, it's full of Mountains and valleys, mountains and valleys, high points and dips. Probably the first dip in my mind that Moses was involved in was just when he was a little infant. The Bible says that Pharaoh then had forgotten about the children of Israel and the promises made to Joseph. So the new Pharaoh got really and extremely jealous of the blessings of the Lord on um, the children of Israel. And what he decided to do was the first Holocaust is really um, uh, recorded there. He was going to kill all of the babies, right? The young men from two and a half, actually three years old and down. Because in Hebrew, they don't count the first year as a year. So it's really three years old and down. And so what they did for Moses was they put him in a little basket. His sister watched it. They put him in the Nile. They hit him. Now think about that. When we read that in the Bible, we don't think about some of the dynamics of that. We don't think about some of the logistics. Did you know there were crocodiles in the Nile? And Moses was in a basket with crocodiles in the brushes. His sister probably not only had to watch him warding off anybody who may see the Hebrew wanting to kill him in the basket but also had to watch out for crocodiles for crocodiles 
And that's kind of a dippy place, wouldn't you say? No pun intended in the water. That's kind of a dippy place. But before he was in the palace, he went from the water to the palace. He was in a place of obscurity and difficulty, the dip. And then later on in life, before he was a leader, he was a murderer. He saw somebody abusing one of his Hebrew brethren, lost his temper, and murdered him. So he went from being a murderer, a dippy place, to being a leader. How many of you would agree with that? And then later on in life, as he's leading the children of Israel, out of Egypt, right after one of the greatest transitions of wealth in history, that probably took about two to three hours, right? The Egyptians threw their wealth at the Israelites and said, get out of here. And they're going to the Red Sea. As they hit the Red Sea, they're stuck. They have an enemy behind them who's just realized what they've lost and what they've done. Mad as mad can be. And they've got an insurmountable obstacle ahead of them. Wouldn't you call that the dip? I'd call that the dip. But we see one of the greatest miracles in human history happen in that deep dip. You see, the dip is necessary for us to becoming everything that God ever meant us to become. That guy actually had a biblical principle when he wrote that book. Now, there are about four things that the dip will do for you this morning that I, for those of us, because I'm in a dip, for those of us who are in the dip, there are four things I believe that God uses to mold us and make us in the dip that are absolutely necessary for us to be all that he wants us to be. The first thing about the dip is this, and you might want to write this down, it will stretch you like nothing else will. And man, when you're being stretched, you're going through a changing educational learning process, right? It will do things and have you do things that you've never done. My father used to say, rubber doesn't break. So through life, the ups and downs, you better be pretty flexible because rubber doesn't break. But we find that in the Bible. We find some of the greatest depths before some of the greatest accomplishments. For instance, Joshua is leading the children of Israel. A couple of times ago that I spoke to you, I spoke to you on, the, on Shittim. Remember that? That's a real biblical. Nobody be offended by that, right? Shittim. And Shittim was a nice place. It was a really well-rounded place. And people could live in that place very well for a very long time without ever moving into what God had for them. And as the children of Israel are moving from Shittim down into the Jordan to get into the Promised Land, which is a much better place than Shittim is, what happened was the Jordan was at flood tide. Now, I heard, in fact, I read that if you've got two feet of water to three feet of water, traveling at no more than five miles an hour, that'll sweep a car away. That'll just sweep a car. Anybody ever see those videos that people play, you know, stupid people videos? This guy thought he could drive his car through it, you know, and it's swept down the river and he can't get out. Well, the Jordan was at flood tide and it was probably moving anywhere between 12 to 15 miles an hour. And it wasn't anything that anybody could actually cross very easily without a help or a rope or restraint, a bridge, something. And um, God asked Joshua to lead the people actually through that river at flood tide. That's the dip. That's the challenge. And as the children of Israel get down, I can see in Joshua's probably thinking, yeah, we did this before. But we had a stick. All they have to do is slap maybe the Jordan River with a rod like Moses did with the Red Sea and it parted. You know, maybe that'll happen. You know, but God spoke to Joshua and said, we've got it. We're going to do something different to get through this obstacle, through the stick. And what was the different thing? They took the most precious thing that they had, which was the Ark of the Covenant. And instead of taking a stick, 
The Ark of the Covenant actually had to go down in front of everybody. And oh boy, I hope I'm hearing God right. Because I'm going to tell you the wrath of God. I just can hear Joshua going, I can, the wrath of God's going to come. And we're all not going to live if this isn't right. And I hope this is right. And so the ark goes down. And, and when the Bible says, when the priests who are carrying the ark get ankle deep in the water, the waters part and they go through. My point in telling you that is this. That the dip will always require something of us that we have never done before. It will be different. To get to the next level requires us being stretched and so that we can grow. The second thing, it will give you a different perspective. You'll just think, see things differently. You know, the way you see things from the top down is very different than the way you see things from the bottom up. I have a friend, a partner in business, and he says to me this, he goes, John, it can always get worse. Really? He goes, yep, it can always get worse because he's been through a few dips. He's been through a few bankruptcies. He's had great success, but he's been through a few dips. When you're in a dip, your perspective becomes better, I would say, than from the top down. You understand what it is, a perspective from going from bad to maybe a little worse but then going up again. Pers life is actually just a matter of perspective sometimes. Um, a dad came home and found this note from his 16-year-old son in his desk, on his desk, office desk, and it says, Dad, at 16 years old, I now feel I need to take the next step in life. He goes, uh, I have met the love of my life, and her name is Lori. Lori and I will be moving in together. She currently lives in the woods, but we decided to get a place together where we can raise our baby. Love your son, Jack. And underneath it said, P.S., P.S., everything I just wrote is not true. My report card is on your desk. Just wanted you to know things could be worse. Hallelujah. Well, what do you think? Are you climbing out of that dip? We've all had the dips. And today we learned it's not forever. You can come up out of that dip. I'm so proud to have my dear friend, Pastor John Corden, with us today. Thank you, Pastor John, for that word. Well, it was, a, it was just boiling in me for the last two weeks. And I forgotten quite frankly i read this book about 10 years ago right i'd forgotten about it right right and um i don't know why it just popped into my mind and i thought you know you know that's through the bible yeah yeah it's through the bible every great individual who's ever done anything for god or have ever done anything in life they it's have gone through the dips gone through the dips and they've yeah. been made better through the dips and, yeah yeah um god's used those dips to mold them and make them into what right. God needs them to be for the next level. Yes, yes. And it's so important at this hour, you say you forgot about the book. God didn't forget about the illustrative no. book. He brought it to your mind when we could see in, at the culmination of your ministry how people are all in that dip it's, throughout it's this room. Every, everybody. In fact, I think right now our nation is in a dip. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I my goodness. I think our goodness. nation is in a dip, but we'll get through it. Yes, yes. And we'll be better for it. Yes, amen. Amen. We're going to pray it through. Yeah. He is a way maker. He is a way maker. He's a miracle worker. That's the God that we serve. Exactly. I so appreciate you coming. Oh, and my privilege. Sharing. The privilege is always mine. You know that. It's, I know. I know. I come John. here. I'm coming home, man. I know, but I know you're very busy yeah. uh, in your, your businesses and. You've been such a great asset to us here with our financial refinancing and all that we, you've got the mind for it and it, it's just been a blessing. Well, it's been my privilege yeah. and I mean that sincerely. Mm -hmm. I mean well, that sincerely. You're back again whenever yeah. we can get you. Okay. Trust you've enjoyed this program today and it's been a blessing to you and maybe it spoke right to you because you're in that dip, but the good news is it's temporary. It's temporary. Keep right. believing. Keep reading the word, keep worshiping, and you're going to climb up out of that dip. If you've enjoyed this program so far, 
with Shabbat, with Pastor John, with all the exhortations that went on, give us a call. The number's on your screen. We have prayer councils waiting to even pray you through the dip that you're in. Yeah. And we'd love to send you a CD or a DVD absolutely free. We're an outreach center. We feed the hungry, we clothe the naked, and we want to send the word of God to you. The whole message of Pastor John. All you have to do, call the number on your screen. We'll pray with you, we'll believe with you, and we'll send you a CD. Hey, it's been great once again being an on retro, getting it all back. I'm Pastor Lynn, this is Pastor John, and we say be blessed, highly favored, and empowered to prosper. We'll see you soon.